Hello everyone, this is Byron Lehman. Uh, thanks for stopping by. This is my YouTube channel, uh, The Jittery Goat, and I also have a website. It's entitled The um, Jittery Goat at jitterygee.com. In today's video, um, I'd like to share with you a, 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 the background of this uh, story that I uh, am going to post in the comments section. It's called Jim's Painting. And uh, so it's about art, it's about painting. And sometimes when we look at a, um, a picture or uh, a painting or even a photograph, we look at the, you know, sometimes we um, see the people, the characters in, the, in it and so forth, or we're just looking at a landscape. And we might wonder what is the background of that painting or that picture, that photograph. And so sometimes uh, for a writer, that's, he, that's, that's like a seed planted. And uh, a short story can come out of that. And uh, so that's what, that, that's an idea sometimes. Uh, we're always sometimes looking for something to prompt us, or sometimes it comes just automatically. We see something and we say, well, uh, I, wanna, I wanna write that. And so the short story that I'm going to link you to is about a painter who uh, retires and he's uh, in his golden years. And what he decides to do was uh, turn to, return to his passion that he had when he was younger, and that is writing. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a painting, and I return to writing, uh, is and um, sketching and so forth. And so that's what he wanted to do, and so he returned to it. And um, you'll have to read uh, read on to see what happens after he does that. And it's interesting is that um, when we think about painters, sometimes uh, they all try to tell a story in some way, or they they're trying to exude some sort of a philosophy on life. And uh, however, writing, you might say, is the ultimate uh, uh, art form because uh, many writers, almost all of them, at one time or other wrote a book to explain themselves or uh, desired to write one. So uh, what does one want to say? <laughs> and uh, that's where stories come about. And um, so this is about uh, really the lesson is, um, if you're looking for a lesson is, is uh, return to your passion and uh, it uh, you know in your uh, in your golden years and uh, that might enliven uh, some other good things in your life too so where did this story come from well i don't want to make it a long story but unfortunately i think it will be um, a couple years ago i contacted uh, an old schoolmate and um, the reason why i contacted him again is a long story so we won't go into that However, we got to talking a little bit. And um, so, you know, it's like it's 50, 55 years since we'd seen each other, maybe longer. And you no, know, we saw each other at the 20 class reunion, you know. And uh, so, anyway, uh, you want an opportunity to sometimes maybe to open up a chapter or close a chapter in, in your life. And uh, I always admired this guy uh, from a distance. And I wanted to tell him about that and uh, this conversation. So there was a couple of events that stand out to me uh, among many that kind of revolved around this person. And his name was Jim Augsburger. Now, Jim, you know, graduated from high school and college and med school and so forth and became a, an eye surgeon and uh, a renowned eye surgeon. And uh, so here we are in, in high school and it's um, our sophomore year. We're, we're getting ready for a science fair. We all had science fair projects. And uh, before we had the opportunity to set them up and so forth, we're sitting in the school cafeteria. And um, I'm just talking to some friends of mine and and uh, I, I'm you know kind of sitting there and talking and, and Jim is sitting on the other side of the table, just a chair down from me. And, and I notice he's got his arm, um, you know, hiding a piece of paper and he's, He's scribbling, and um, I look over at him. I said, "Jim, what are you doing?" And he said, uh, oh, "Never mind. I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a little bit." And I said, "Okay, you know." So I'm chatting with my buddies, and we're talking a little bit, and um, I get a little more curious. I said, well, "What are you doing?" He said, "I'm, I'm just about done." And uh, okay, so then uh, just like a brief moment uh, later, he slides his piece of paper over to me, and it's a sketch of me. And it looked like me. In fact, it was a little, <laughs> it was kind of flattering. And 
I said, wow, that's, that's really good. And he kind of, kind of grinned, you know, and uh, kind of like a humility, I guess. And, and, um, uh, that always impressed me. I thought, well, why did he pick me? Well, probably because I was across the table from him and I don't know, but, uh, it was good. And, uh, I, I kind of enjoyed that. And so, um, I related this to him, um, you know, some 50 years later, 50 plus years later. And he said, he didn't remember it. I said, boy, I, I, I kind of wish I kept that drawing. I, I probably kept it for a while, but you know, like everything else, it gets lost. And um, so I uh, didn't remember it. And um, so anyway, um, I didn't tell him this, but there's something I remembered a little bit later on about an interaction that Jim and I had. Um, we were sitting in study hall. And, uh, you know, five, ten minutes left. And uh, just to back up just a little bit, um, I used to, I was greatly influenced by a writer named Jack Douglas. Now, Jack Douglas was a member of the Beat Generation uh, out the 40s, 50s, so forth, comedy writer and, and so forth. And uh, he appeared on the Jack Parr show a lot. And he wrote, uh, as I recall, there were at least three books he read. There were more that he, that he wrote. One was uh, Never Kiss a Naked Bus Driver. Um, My Brother Was an Only Child. And um, let's see, what was what was the other? There, there was another one, too. Um, anyway, a uh, funny thing happened to me on the way to the grave. Those are three books I read. And they were just these short vignettes, these short stories, a page, maybe a page and a half long. And they were just, I don't know, vignettes. And I remember as a 15, 16, 17-year-old kid, I, I read these things. I thought, man, this guy is so funny and this is so good. And I said, I can do that. And so um, here I am in this study hall. And I'm, I said, I'm going to do that. And so, you know, I had an idea and I wrote it down. I come writing, I was writing longhand and I throw a piece of paper away and I write more. And finally, it's pretty good. So I look at Jim back there and, and I said, hey, can you read this for me? And so uh, Jim read it. And when he's reading, I, I notice he's kind of chuckling, you know, and he hands it back to me. He says, hey, this is pretty good. Uh, I'm sure he, might, he was probably amazed that I could write. <laughs> How, uh, and, uh, you know, to, to someone uh, who wants to be a writer, that's like gold when someone says, wow, that's pretty good. Now, J Jim, uh, I, I always kind of, I, I really admired him from a standpoint. He was a good student. He really was, and a pretty good athlete. And, um, and I always thought he was just as honest as a day as long. And I kind of admired that about him. But to say we were friends, we weren't. We, uh, His parents were probably keeping him away from me. But uh, he was at the very top of our class. He was a class valedictorian. And I always thought we had some sort of, a, I don't know, a connection of some sort. But surely it wasn't intellectual. <laughs> but Because I, I was right at the, the bottom the bottom rung. Jim was, um, he could look at things and analyze them, look at them with a critical eye and make corrections and so forth. I just remember that about him. But me, I could care less. So we have kind of like that connection. He's, he helped to kind of inspire me to, uh, to write. And uh, I guess that I, <laughs> I inspired him to paint. So, um, it's kind of interesting, as, as, as Jim and I talked over the telephone, uh, he was saying, he was talking about um, uh, writers. He said, I, I, can't, I, I can't understand how dialogue, and uh, you know, to a writer, that's pretty easy stuff. However, on the other hand, I, I can't imagine writing or, or, or uh, painting and, and drawing with depth and so forth. I, I just don't understand that. So each to his own. So, um, it's a short story I, I think you'll like. It's uh, it's based on a real person, Jim Augsburger. And uh, I want to back up just a little bit. Um, uh, the, the story is, is rather short. And um, 
I could have written a lot more, uh, put a lot more depth in it and so forth, but I decided not to. Uh, because I think as a writer, sometimes you have to realize that every story has its own life. Uh, you can't... Um, you can't squeeze more life out and give it more life than what it naturally has. Because when you do write, you, you run the risk of boring the reader or uh, just losing the reader completely in dialogue or whatever. So l let, let a story just have its natural, natural life. And uh, don't be afraid to allow the reader to use their own imagination and fill in some of the blanks. You might think there's blanks and so forth. And, and you as a, as a reader, have you have to recognize those things and know what to leave in and what to, what to let out. Don't put so much in that it, that clouds the issues. So again, trust the reader a little bit. So once again, I'm going to put the link to that short story, Jim's Painting. I'm going to put it in the comments section. And I hope you go, go to uh, jitterygee.com and the, it'll, that'll, the link will take you there. I hope you enjoy it. So um, that's it for now. So just remember, do good things, read good things, write good things, and see good things in others. We'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.